All right, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the absolute best Destiny 2 Shadow Keep PC graphic settings. This guide is gonna be mainly geared toward players that are switching from console to PC now that cross save is enabled and players that really just want to get a massive FPS boost. But before we actually get started with the video, I just wanna go and say that if you guys are new around here, make sure you do go ahead and subscribe. I'm gonna be posting Destiny 2 settings, tips and tricks, leaks, farms, everything Destiny 2 related now that Shadowkeep has launched. So if you guys are interested in anything Destiny 2 related, make sure you do go ahead and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss out on one of my videos. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into these graphic settings. So starting us out, of course, we're going to need to go into our settings. And the first thing you want to do if you guys don't already have it, which you guys should, is just go down to gameplay and right here, FPS display, go ahead and turn it on. You can kind of see mine up here as I'm in orbit. I'm kind of floating between like 400 to like 600 every now and then I'll drop down to like 350. But then past that, you're going to want to go ahead and go to your video settings. Now, with these settings, I'm going to kind of briefly give you all an overview of what all the settings do. But before that, I do want to go ahead and give you all my PC specs. So my specs for my PC is that I have a i9 9900K stock. It's not overclocked. I also have an RTX 2080 Ti, 16 gigabytes of RAM. And yeah, I think that's really all you all need to know. But first off, window mode, put this in full screen. I actually have it in windowed full screen just because I have something else over on my other monitor I am looking at. So go ahead and put this in full screen. If you guys are using like windowed full screen or like borderless full screen, you guys aren't getting the best FPS you all actually could just because full screen actually does increase your FPS quite a bit. But that's kind of just like one of those givens. Uh, resolution set this to whatever your monitor's resolution is unless you have like a 4k monitor and you don't mind playing like 2k or 1080p but if you have a 1080p monitor don't drop it anything lower just put it at 1080p vsync go ahead and turn this off this game has an in-game frame rate capper and vsync is really only good in my opinion if the game you're playing doesn't have an in-game frame rate capper but this game does so we don't have to worry about it go ahead and turn it off it just you know introduces input lag and it's just not fun frame rate cap i actually have mine off just because i want you all to actually see my fps and then at the end of the video whenever i am actually finished giving you guys all the settings i will go on to one of the locations or just one of the planets and i'll actually show you all my fps in game so that's why i'm keeping mine off right now but go ahead turn yours on and then down here the frame rate cap set this to whatever your monitor's refresh rate is so mine is 144 hertz monitor so my fps cap is at 144 hertz some people try to make the argument to leave it unlimited even if you have a 140 hertz monitor or if you have like a 240 hertz monitor don't leave it on unlimited it just pushes your machine more than it actually needs to be pushed considering you actually can't see the frames so like if i'm pushing 200 or 240 fps but my monitor is only 144 hertz i'm actually not seeing all that fps some people try to make the argument that you know well it's more snappier and you get less input lag but to be honest i don't notice it and you won't either so just go ahead turn it on and set the frame rate cap to whatever your hertz are so now getting on to field of view field of view or fov as it's abbreviated is the big one if you're switching from console to pc because on console this option actually is not available so go ahead and put this up to 105 now if you do want to lower it because this does actually affect fps just because fov increases how much you can see in the world around you so of course your machine is having to output more power to actually get that image and it can drop your fps i would recommend going between 95 and 105 anything lower you're pretty much playing on console again uh, and i think these are the sweet spots now if you are at 105 and you still need a few more frames go ahead and drop it down to 95 95 is i would say the minimum you should go there's only about a four frame difference between the two but i think 105 just looks the absolute best now getting onto screen bounds screen bounds is self-explanatory set that whatever you want and so is brightness it's all personal preference now getting on to advanced video, this is the big one. I'm gonna be giving a brief summary of what all these options actually do and then my personal recommendation with the FPS differences of different settings. So now anti-aliasing, we should all know what this does. This just makes everything in the world look more smooth, pretty much like edges on rocks and buildings. If you have this completely off, they will look a little bit jagged where if you have one of the two options on, they will look a whole lot more smooth. So the anti-aliasing I actually recommend 
would be FXAA, and that is because going from SMAA to FXAA, I can't really tell a big difference like whatsoever. Like there's a slight, slight difference, but it's not enough to notice, but it's gonna actually give you about two to three frames going from SMAA to FXAA. Now, if you just wanna go ahead and turn it completely off, it will actually give you about a four frame difference going from SMAA to off. But I think FXAA is the perfect medium. It gives me a few more frames and it also doesn't look completely terrible and I'm not getting a bunch of jagged edges. Now getting on to screen space ambient occlusion, what this is is that this adds contact shadows where two surfaces or objects meet and where an object blocks light from reaching another nearby game element. And that may sound super kind of confusing and you may not know what it means, but in my opinion, it kind of just adds realism to the game, but not to a point that you're actually gonna notice. So the difference between 3D and HDAO is very minimal. And then the difference between HDAO and off is also very minimal. These, I don't really notice them too much unless you're like three centimeters away from your screen looking at a specific pixel. But actually in game when you're moving around, you're not gonna notice it. But what you are gonna notice is that massive FPS increase. Going from 3D to off is gonna give you around an eight FPS increase. So you're gonna be getting about eight more frames per second. So what I do is I just go ahead and turn it off. Those eight frames are much more worth it than having small little details. So next up we have texture anastropy. Now, I'm not used to this being called this, so I probably butchered that name. What I'm used to it being called is anastropic filtering, but this is what it's called in this game. It's the same thing. Now, 16 to off, you're not gonna notice any FPS. You may notice about a one FPS increase. So then you may be thinking, well, then why do you have it on eight and not 16? So I actually like to put it on eight just because it strains my PC a little bit less. And I mean, if I'm not noticing a difference and there's no point for me to have it jacked all the way up to the highest when eight doesn't look any different. It looks literally the exact same. So I like to put mine on eight and I think you should too. So now getting on to texture quality. This is a big one that I think you all should listen to. Actually, I think the next few settings are pretty big. So listen up. Texture quality, this is super self-explanatory, but it's the clarity of every texture affecting every surface and every object in Destiny 2. This is pretty much everything you look at uh, that you know is a surface, everything has a texture, this is what's affecting them. So highest is actually what I recommend you all running texture quality at because the difference between highest and lowest, literally I don't see a single FPS increase. There is not one whatsoever and it's known that texture quality, if the game is well optimized for PC, you can jack this all the way up to the highest, get the best quality and it's not gonna tank your FPS or affect it whatsoever. So go ahead and just jack this up to the highest. You're really gonna thank me because it being on medium or lowest, your game starts looking just like an incredible just blob of like just colors. That's pretty much all it looks like. So now getting onto shadow quality and this is a big one again. So what this is, is that this just creates, you know, more immersive worlds, more enhancing cinematic stories and cut scenes. It also just enables like higher quality shadows. Now this will absolutely tank your FPS. For example, the difference between highest and lowest is almost a 12 FPS increase. So if you're running this on highest, go ahead and drop it down to the lowest setting. You're not gonna notice literally any difference at all. In fact, I prefer shadows being less of a quality. And to be honest, the only thing I really notice is that shadows on a high quality are a little bit smoother and they're more black where shadows on a lowest quality are a little bit you know, more grainy or just not as smooth and they're gray. That's all I notice. And if you're moving around with as fast as Destiny 2 actually is on PC, you're not gonna notice them whatsoever. Go ahead, turn it down. It's gonna save your PC some strain and you're also gonna get more FPS. Now getting on to depth of field. Depth of field is the blurring that is applied during in-game cinematics, scripted moments, and in select instances. So think of like aiming down with your uh, gun, everything around you that isn't in your reticle view is actually blurry. This is what this is. And to be honest, I think this is just annoying. So I turned it off, but it just so happens that the difference between the highest and offsetting for depth of field will actually give you about a six to seven FPS increase. So that's good. Personally, I just think it's annoying. And the fact that I don't like it anyway, but it also gives me more FPS is nice. So if you all want more FPS, go ahead and turn this off. So now getting on to environmental detail distance, what this affects, this affects things like buildings, cliffs, rocks, roads, and a variety of other objects like, you know, like uh, destroyed cars, all that stuff. And it affects them that are in the distance. So the further the way they are, the more this is gonna affect them. Now, to be honest, 
high medium and low medium and low look really bad in my opinion high looks the best and the fps increase you get from going to high to low is not even a one fps increase so you might as well just leave it on high as you're going to be able to not have your game look like just a massive blob so go ahead and leave it on high as you're not going to get an fps increase now getting on to character detail distance this one is kind of the same thing as environmental detail distance except this just affects characters so other guardians npcs enemies this is actually going to affect them now here's the thing going from high medium and low you can't really tell the difference but then again your fps doesn't have any sort of difference like you don't even get a single like 0.1 fps increase so just leave it on high you'll thank me later um it also just doesn't affect your fps so just go ahead and leave it up there now getting on to foliage detail distance remember when i said environmental detail distance affected everything that wasn't a plant you know like a tree a shrub a bush or grass well this one is this affects everything that are plants so like trees shrubs bushes grass all that now here's the thing going from high to medium you can't really notice that much of a difference like i barely notice it whatsoever but going from medium to low or high to low everything looks just like a massive blob so leave it on medium and going from medium to high will actually give you around a five fps increase a four to a five fps increase so i think medium is that perfect middle ground and in fact i actually kind of like the way it looks things actually look a little bit more crisp on medium i don't know why i maybe that's just my own personal opinion but you know it's giving me five extra fps so why not so now getting onto foliage shadow distance what this is, is that this is all the shadows coming off the foliage so the trees the plants the shrubs the grass i put mine on medium literally so from what i've seen when i've read you get like a 0.1 fps increase by going down but here's the thing i just don't like shadows so i just put mine on medium anyway and it also just takes strain off of my pc so medium is what i like to rock with I think y'all should rock with it too if y'all don't like shadows so now getting onto light shafts or what they're also known as in other games as god rays this is pretty much just the sun's effect just like the rays of uh, light so there's no difference uh going from high to medium and there's no fps difference so i just put mine on medium just because i don't really care for god rays um but yeah now getting on to motion blur this doesn't have an effect on your performance either uh but i just don't like motion blur it's kind of like depth of field i just don't like it so i just turn it off um that's kind of personal preference but uh this game on pc you move so fast that there's going to be a form of motion blur anyway even if you have it off so i just wanted to reduce it even further now getting on to wind impulse what this is is that this is like bullet impact supers grenade abilities footsteps vehicle thrusters uh, this is kind of like how the wind affects like the foliage and to be honest you're not really going to notice an fps difference at all so going from on to off is saving like a 0.1 fps or whatever so i just leave mine on just because i mean i think it's kind of cool that the foliage moves whenever you know like grenades or supers are thrown at them so i just leave mine on not that really big of a difference now getting on to the last part of the video settings uh render resolution keep that at 100 if you are really having terrible fps drops even with all these settings i've given you uh turn your render resolution down the lowest i would go would be 90 percent uh, that'll give you a little bit worse of an image quality but more fps uh, hdr that's only if you actually have an hdr display and i actually don't so that's off uh, chromatic abrasion uh, this is like this is a weird setting I just turned it off and I think you all should too some people say they like it so if you know what it is then use it like I kind of know what it is but I kind of don't uh, but I just turned it off and then film grain I just don't like film grain um, film grain in my opinion is only useful if you have anti-aliasing completely off uh, then film grain may actually make a difference just because like with anti-aliasing completely off you have those jagged edges but then film grain adds like a grain across like the entire film kind of like how the name implies uh, so it's actually going to uh, kind of smoothen it up a little bit but I have anti-aliasing on so I just go ahead and turn that off uh, no really FPS increases just like a one or a two if you actually do turn these off and the render resolution will actually give you a big FPS increase um, but it will also downgrade your quality a ton so now with all of that out of the way, all of the settings that I have given you all, everything from the video to the advanced to the additional video, I'm now actually gonna go ahead and put it on full screen real quick. All right, there we go, we are now on full screen. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and load up into the moon. That is a new destination on shadow keep just so y'all can see what kind of FPS I'm getting because in orbit, it doesn't really do it justice. Like yeah, I'm getting 600 plus, uh, but in game, it's not gonna be that. Uh, I hate that I've seen videos of people that are giving these settings, but they're doing it in orbit. Like, of course, you're going to pull, you know, 200 frames in orbit. Like, I'm over here pulling five, almost 600. 
um, but yeah let's go ahead and load down into the moon now one thing I will go ahead and say about destiny is that whenever you first load into a POI your FPS tanks also I think this game is one of the weirdest when it comes to FPS fluctuation as you can see right now I'm only getting about 160 to about 170 but that will actually slowly increase um, the more time I'm in the world also if you switch between like locations or you know you're on a planet and then you move between like you know one location to the other location you're actually gonna like drop fps just because this game it's like you look in one distance and you go from looking at the ground to looking at you know three miles out and it's just like star shooting and you know just like it it's a very fps variable i guess game um like right now, so now that I've been here for a while and you would think maybe me, with me not moving, my FPS would have been higher, but actually now with me moving, now that I've been on this POI or the moon for longer, my FPS is actually going up. So, and also another thing I just wanted to mention as well is that I'm also recording. So as soon as I end the recording, uh, my FPS will skyrocket up. So I'll be hitting about 300. So yeah. Hopefully y'all did enjoy the video. Sorry if it was a little bit time consuming, but I did want to go super in depth with all the settings because I haven't seen anyone else do it. And I know there's a lot of people switching from console over to PC. So I think that this will really help you console guys out. And with that out of the way, hopefully y'all did enjoy the video and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.